We have studied this week the physical and chemical properties of alkaline metals. However, how would you relate these properties with the general ideas that we have seen during week one related to redox reactions? Well, it is clear that alkaline metals only have an oxidation state, which is one plus, in order to reach the stable configuration of noble gases. That's why the redox chemistry is limited to a simple change in oxidation state in its elemental state and vice versa. Actually, no more oxidation states are known, so no, com no more complex reactions should be happening. The most common will be the oxidation of the metal, since it's highly electropositive. Yeah, in fact, we have studied several examples of this type of reaction, and I think they are all really spectacular, such as the reaction with water or with some non-metals. The reaction with chlorine gas is a beautiful example, because it is possible to obtain a common product of our daily life from two dangerous starting materials. And we also have studied as well the redox reaction in the other way around, from one plus state to zero stage. The electrolysis process of molten sodium chloride in down cell, which produces the pure metal. Okay, and what about uh, the acids and base properties of these elements? Uh, these properties are less evident at the beginning, but it's easy to deduce that all the elements are basic, uh, like the rest of the metals from this side of the periodic table. In the elemental form, they are all blasted lorry bases because they take a product from a weak acid, such <laughs> as water. And in solution, they form the corresponding hydroxide, which is a strong base. But are all the combination of these elements basic? Not at all. For example, the halides, they are all neutral solution. They totally dissociate in the corresponding ions, which stay in solution in the hydrated form. They do not react with water. Yes, that's correct. For example, sodium chloride, which is the common table salt that we use every day at home, only form sodium and chlorine ions in water. Let's examine the physical properties of these elements. Which features do you think are more relevant? They are very light. They really have a low density. Yeah, this is due to their large volume. Uh, they are the biggest element of the mm -hmm. corresponding row. Additionally, they have a very weak metallic bonding uh, contributing only with a valence electron, and due to this fact, they are malleable and ductile. Effectively, and for that reason, they have low melting and boiling point. Cesium, for example, is liquid near to room temperature. What type of bonding do you expect in alkali compounds? Obviously ionic. They are very electropositive with very low ionization energies, and great tendency to lose the first electron from the out outermost cell. Yes, but this is more remarkable in elements down in a group because they are bigger and their ionization energy is lower. That's why they have a greater tendency to lose their last electron. Which of these elements or combination of them are more relevant in your lives? Well, uh, nowadays, in my opinion, is lithium. Uh, you know, batteries of laptops and mobile phones are based on lithium because of its low reduced potential and these devices are uh, absolutely necessary in our daily lives. That's a difficult question to answer. All of them are really present in our life. But due to the role in human body, the sodium-potassium pump, which is responsible for maintaining the sodium and potassium ions concentrations, may that, in my opinion, these two elements result vital in our lives. I agree with my course mates, but I wouldn't forget the uh, home applications of sodium hydroxide, like how it is used uh, reacting with grease, and uh, the applications in the food industry, like how it's used to break proteins to make olives edible, uh, like the ones we eat every day. Yes, and also baking soda, which is used in cooking as leavening agent. That's right. Do you know why baking soda is used as leavening agent? Uh, probably it is because of its reaction with acids, which uh, liberates carbon dioxide and water vapor, making the dough to rise. Although for this task, it's more effective baking powder, in which baking soda is already mixed with a weak acid, such as calcium, dihydrogen, phosphate. 